So this is cool. Back when I got into high-end audio, my original destination piece was a musical fidelity integrated amplifier, the A3.2 to be precise. Now back then, I didn't really have a whole lot of money, but I liked the look of the A3.2, I liked the sound, and quite frankly, it was approachable in terms of its price. Now eventually I was able to buy that integrated amp, and while I absolutely loved it, I mean, come on. I was addicted to that stuff at the time, and quite frankly, whenever you're bitten by the hi-fi bug, it's difficult to stay happy with something over the long haul. Still, I have fond memories of it, and I think it's cool how today I get to go a little bit full circle here by telling you all about the Musical Fidelity M6SI. Now there's a couple of cool things about this integrated amp, but what I really like is the fact that this integrated is six years old. And you may be asking, okay, then why are you reviewing it? Well, the easy answer is it's still in production, and when I asked Musical Fidelity if they plan on replacing it anytime soon, they said no. We feel like it's still a great integrated amplifier that competes very well against everybody else. Which I have to admit, after listening to it, I agree. Something I'll get to in just a moment. But first, let's take a peek on the inside. So, Musical Fidelity advertises this integrated as being basically a separate system in one chassis. They advertise the output section as being dual mono, but when you look inside, you'll see this nice large toroidal transformer, but wait, there's not two of them. Well, what's going on here is this transformer has dual windings, so technically, technically, they're not lying. It also has a fully active preamp with its own 15 volt circuit, so this is gonna be our potentiometer, assuming that's the preamp. And what I like about this is this modular design. It looks like it's easy to work on, so if something were to ever happen to this unit outside of warranty, I don't see any exotic parts here, and it looks like it would just be very, very simple to work on. Now, as far as specs go, this amplifier will output 220 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and I believe it's 300 or maybe it's 330 watts per channel into 4 ohms. Just look for the text above if I'm wrong. And I think it has peak power of 400 watts output into 4 ohms. The price is going to be $2,790. We're just going to round up and call it $2,800. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay a little bit more attention to chassis and the front of the unit. We have these thick metal pieces that are just always satisfying when you're spending this kind of money. These heat sinks that look pretty cool. So now let's bring our attention to the front of the unit. All right, so as you can tell, it has this very clean aesthetic going on. So why don't we go ahead and turn it on. When you do, it'll illuminate this nice blue color. So there's not a lot of features here, at least not in the front. So we have a power button, we have a CD button. This is gonna be our USB input. This has a built-in USB DAC. Phono stage, it has a built-in moving magnet, moving coil phono stage. This big, all metal volume control. Then we have a button for tuner. Auxiliary, auxiliary two, balanced, and we have a spot for the remote control. Remote control is this flimsy little plastic thing, but you know what? That's okay, so why don't we do this? Let's, uh, actually, you know what? Let me stop myself right there and show you the remote that I'm talking about. So this is it, and as you can tell, it's nothing fancy, just a basic plastic remote, but hey, it gets the job done, right? So let's move on by taking a look at the back of this unit. Okay, so here's the back of the M6SI, so let's quickly go over the different inputs and outputs. On the top row, we have a set of terminals for our speaker cables. Next to that, we have a spot for ground in case you need it. We have a trigger in, trigger out, and then on the bottom row, on the very left-hand corner, we have a USB input for a DAC. This is a 24-bit, 96 kilohertz DAC. Next to that, we have a set of balanced inputs. Then beneath our ground terminal, we have a phono stage. This is going to be moving magnet and moving coiled. You can switch between those two here. And then next to that, we have a bunch of different analog inputs, starting with AUX1 slash HT. So this is cool. This is actually a home theater bypass, and if you want to use it as such, just click the switch. Very nice. Next to that, we have a number of different inputs, auxiliary 2, CD, tuner. We have a line out, and we also have a pre-out, which is very cool. Next to that, we have the IEC inlet for the power cord, and then look at that. This is made in March 2017, which begs the question, this integrated has been out forever, so why do so many people still really enjoy it? Well, let's talk about that now. Okay. 
Okay, so I've spent a fair amount of time with the M6SI, and now I can safely say I both understand and appreciate why so many people out there really like this integrated amplifier. Because when you get right down to it, what it gives you is this big, entertaining sound. It has effortless resolution, a lot of power, strong dynamic output. It gives you this open and spacious presentation, yet there's still body and weight to the sound. It really does a great job of checking off all the boxes that I think most enthusiasts have whenever they're dropping around $3,000 on an integrated amplifier. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go over its different characteristics. That way you can determine whether or not this is something that would interest you. So let's get right to it. Okay, so in my experience, the M6SI has, as I mentioned before, a very entertaining sound. A presentation that I would describe as being on the slightly forward side of neutral thanks to a bump into treble, but otherwise is going to be clean, open sounding, if not maybe just a little bit warm in the lower mid-range and bass. Let me explain what I mean by going into the details, starting with the treble. So the treble, as I just mentioned, is going to be just a little bit tilted up, but I don't think it's egregiously so. I don't think that this is an integrated amplifier that's going to sound overly sharp, bright, aggressive, or grainy sounding in any way. In fact, just the opposite, it is all about clarity. It has great resolution, which is assisted by a very low noise floor. And what this does is this allows each detail to almost have its own space within the recording which is actually very reminiscent of a true high-end presentation. Now, what's so interesting about this is, remember, this is an older integrated amplifier, and back then, whenever treble was tilted up, usually this meant that you were going to get an outright bright sound with forward-sounding recordings. But I noticed that this isn't always the case with the M6SI. If you pair it up to smooth-sounding speakers, you're actually going to get this fine balance between great resolution, yet something that is still very forgiving in nature. So I think a lot of people who are stepping into an integrated amp in this range for the first time, you're going to love that effortless resolution that you will find with the M6SI, particularly in the treble and the mid-range. Speaking of the mid-range, so the mid-range overall is going to take on more of this neutral characteristic, meaning that it's not going to be thin, it's not necessarily going to be warm, it's just going to be open, spacious, very resolute, and for the most part, very consistent in its delivery. Now, when you get to the lower mid-range, that is when you're going to get some warmth to the sound, and this is what helps to give the presentation some body and to prevent it from sounding like your cliched hi-fi amplifier that's all about resolution, but then it sounds like there's no cream filling. So that leads me, of course, to the bass. So the bass is going to be strong. It's going to be prominent. In fact, in many respects, it feels like the entire foundation of the presentation is built from the bass. It's not going to be the quickest bass in the world. There's just a little bit extra there, but I think that this helps to give the sound some heft, and I also think that it has a very pleasing tone. Now moving on, let's talk about dynamic output because to me, this is a strong suit for the M6SI. It is a very dynamic amplifier. And this is great news for people who listen to classical music because a lot of the emotion that you experience in classical music can be felt through those dynamic contrasts. And the M6SI, whether it's micro or macro, does a great job in this regard. And then, of course, we have to talk about power output capabilities. It is a monster. And what's great about its power delivery is not only does it have a lot of power, but it's very linear. In other words, you don't really have to dig heavily into the volume in order to get a lot of power out of it. And plus, this helps to give you confidence. It means that almost regardless of the speakers that you own, odds are it will drive them very well and to louder volumes, to the volumes that you may want to listen to. And there's something to be said for that because even a lot of other integrated amplifiers in this range can't necessarily do all of that while delivering good power, but this one can. So overall, what you're left with is this Good all-around performer. There's good integration between the treble, the mid-range, and the bass, but it's definitely not going to be linear, not objectively accurate. It does give you an entertaining sound, but I think for many people, again, who are spending this kind of money, it's exactly what you're looking for. But the big question is, okay, it does a lot of great things, but is it perfect? What are the issues with the M6SI? Well, let's go over that right now. You know, when you take a step back and you just look at the M6SI for what it is, it's difficult to come up with any glaring weaknesses, which again is probably why people really like this integrated amp. But still, I can come up with three things worth talking about here. The first being the most obvious observation, which is, 
it lacks any kind of streaming capabilities. Now, this is to be expected for an integrated amplifier that's around six years in age, but what that means is that if you're somebody who's searching for a one box solution today in 2020 and streaming is your main way of consuming music and you don't wanna buy a separate streamer, then that's going to be a deal killer. Moving on, this integrated amplifier runs unusually warm to the touch even when no music is playing. Now you may think that it's because it's heavily biased into class A, but that's actually not the case. It is barely biased into class A. This is predominantly a class B integrated amplifier, yet despite that, it still runs very warm, just something to be aware of. And then lastly, look, as with every hi-fi component, not everybody is going to like the sound. It has a big, muscular, entertaining presentation. Some people may feel like it's too much of a good thing, or maybe they'll get tired of it over the long haul. And then there's going to be occasions to where it may not pair up well to certain types of loudspeakers. And that leads me to some tips and advice about what you can do to get great performance out of the M6SI. So as I just mentioned, the M6SI runs warm, meaning that if you want to enjoy a long lifespan out of this integrated, then you need to give it room to breathe. This means you should not stack a component directly on top of it, nor should you place it inside of an enclosed space, like say a sealed cabinet. Instead, you should make sure there's adequate airflow at all times while the unit is on, and provided you can do that, you should be in for a good time. Next, let's talk about speaker matching. So by and large, the M6SI can accommodate most speakers very well, even if you have something that's difficult to drive in a larger room. Now, in my experience, I feel like it performs best with speakers that are more warm and smooth in their character, but it'll also sound good with products that are more neutrally voiced, as well as panel speakers. In fact, the only type of speakers that I would be hesitate to recommend in terms of pairing would be with products that have more of a forward and prominent treble region, just because because I feel like the match between those and the M6SI may be too much of a good thing. But even then, this is something that you will have to explore for yourself to see how you'll react to that combination in your own situation. Otherwise, the M6SI is incredibly easy to accommodate. And that leads me to my final thoughts. You know, in some respects, the M6SI reminds me of the Triangle Bro 3. Hear me out for a second. Not only do both products have a very entertaining sound, but I feel like they have the type of sonic traits that many people are looking for when it comes to a product within their specific category. And in the case of the M6SI, what you're getting is a well-made, well-rounded performing integrated amplifier that in my opinion, is still relevant even today in 2020. Now, subjectively speaking, my reaction to this integrated amplifier was mostly positive. I say mostly because I admit that with bright sounding speakers, especially more forward and dynamic dynamic sounding speakers, I feel like the combination is just too much of a good thing. The treble is just a little too prominent, and quite frankly, I felt like I was listening to something with the loudness button on pretty much at all times. But when I pair up the M6SI to more neutral to laid back and warm sounding speakers, this is when I think it really shines. In fact, I don't mind saying not only did it sound great with my Dynaudio Evokes and my Harbeth P3s, but I could see myself living with the M6SI Harbeth P3 combination for many years. And for those of you who know me, I mean, that's a pretty big compliment because this is a part of my desktop system and my desktop system gets more use than my main system. So ultimately, that is going to be my take on the M6SI. Stick around if you're into comparisons, but if you're not, then thanks for watching and until next time, peace. All right, so first up is the Musical Fidelity M6SI and the Parasound Halo HEN6. Now what makes this comparison so fun is that both integrated amplifiers have a powerful, muscular, if not a slightly warm presentation. And plus, both have been around for a while and they're known for offering reliable, well-rounded performance. But having said that, there are going to be differences between the two, so first, let's start off with Musical Fidelity. Overall, the Musical Fidelity is going to offer a cleaner sounding presentation, particularly throughout the mid-range and the treble. Speaking of treble, the treble is going to be a bit more lively and tilted up through the Musical Fidelity, and the detail is also going to come across as more effortless thanks to a notably lower noise floor. You're also going to get better focusing within the soundstage, and plus it's going to give you a more dynamic sounding presentation. 
However, the Parasun also has its advantages. I feel like the top end is slightly smoother than the Musical Fidelity, and one could argue that it's a bit more even keeled in terms of tonal balance. I'm talking about the ability to integrate the treble, the mid-range, and the bass effortlessly. Speaking of bass, I also feel like the bass is a little bit tighter and more controlled through the Parasound. And even though the Parasound retails for $200 more than Musical Fidelity, I think all the features that you get with the Parasound makes up for that. Anyways, look, here's the bottom line. Both of these integrated amplifiers are very good and they compete very well against one another. The Parasound is a bit more balanced and forgiving, whereas the Musical Fidelity is a bit cleaner and more effortless sounding. So now let's move on to the next comparison. All right, so let's wrap up this review with a comparison between the M6SI and the Yamaha AS1200 integrated amplifier. So this makes for a fun comparison because both units are very different from one another. So let's start off with the most obvious observation, which is the difference in size. The 1200 is a significantly larger integrated amp when compared to the M6SI, and it's also notably heavier. In fact, even though the M6SI features excellent build quality, I would say that the Yamaha AS1200 is still a class leader in that regard, at least by conventional standards. But what about performance? So overall, the Musical Fidelity, as usual, will have some advantages. It has a notably more powerful sound. So hey, size isn't everything, right? It sounds more dynamic. It has an overall cleaner presentation. Now the mid-range, by comparison, is going to be a little bit leaner sounding than once you get with the Yamaha, but it otherwise has a more open and spacious sound to it. Whereas the Yamaha, by direct comparison, it has more body, more weight to the sound. The presentation by comparison is going to be a little bit more closed in and there's going to be more emphasis on giving you a full if not forward sounding mid-range. Now the treble on the Yamaha is kind of situated between the pair sound smoothness and the musical fidelity's expressiveness. Anyways, did I say Ness? Anyways, <laughs> I need a pumpkin spice latte. Anyways, Yet again, I mean, look, guys, this is a fun comparison. I think the musical fidelity in this situation takes on more of a classic hi-fi sound, whereas the Yamaha, at least once broken in, and that's a really key factor here, has more of a full but obviously colored presentation. So anyways, it just boils down to what you prefer in terms of looks and sound. Anyways, guys, that's going to be my take on this comparison and really the M6SI. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.